to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to the special edition of Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. I'm Chris, and with me as always is... Jesse. All right, and today in our special episode, we're going to do, as promised, a thorough review of the Fender Bass Breaker 007. Tra. Do my, my Vanna White. Oh, or is it Janice from The Price Is Right? Uh, it, you can go either way. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, by the way, <laughs> I should also introduce our other special guest. I'm not sure if she's in frame, but the dog Rosie. Rosie the dog. Yeah, I guess today she's going to be the show mascot. <laughs> Just a heads up, she might be walking around having <laughs> it's a good not time. Like we can do anything about it yeah, anyway. <laughs> exactly. We're not gonna do anything about it. We're this is just, you know, if you watch the show, this should not surprise you. Uh, in fact, you've probably seen the dog before if you watch the show. Indeed. That's Rosie. So we're gonna do a pretty thorough review of this amp. Um, today we're gonna play a bunch of different guitars through it so you can sort of get a sense of how it sounds. Just keep in mind that, you know, you're hearing this through our microphones and through your speakers. So, you know, take take it for what it's worth. But I mean, it'll give you a sense of comparison, different pickups, different styles, whatever you can do, whatever you might think. Um, it's a one EL84 uh, power tube, although the manual says an EL34. I think that's probably a typo. That would be my guess. Who knows? I would think. Yeah. Quick, I don't care. I'm not that hardcore of a tube guy. In fact, this is my first it's tube, a tube It glows. It it's glows. A tube. Right, right. It does a tube thing. There's two 12AX7... Um, uh, tubes in the preamp and so pretty basic 1x10 Celestian 1030 speaker uh, let's see what else do we have here going on we got the pretty it feels nice yeah it feels nice it's kind of this new sort of fender look some people online like it some people don't like it what's not to like I don't know my philosophy is it makes sound it makes sounds that I like I don't care what it looks like we'll say at the outset we like this amp yeah. It's really nice uh, yeah, we should say that totally. It's a pretty cool amp. We found the range to be, you know, good cleans up to we were talking before show ACDC. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Hard yeah. rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was trying to do a little bit of I don't know what I was doing. Eighties metal. It doesn't quite do the metal thing. You're not gonna get metallic out of it. Without a pedal, obviously. You, you put a whatever, metal zone or something in front of it, you sky's the limit, but but the amp itself, yeah, it tops out at about like some hard rock stuff, which uh, is good. I don't think, really, it's hard to expect that much more than that out of an amp. Yeah. You know, one tube, unless you're talking a modeler, there's only so much range. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, love the amp. Um, it has, and now I should say, uh, probably as a little bit of a coming clean, I only own Fender amps. Uh, I've played That's lots, true. lots of different amps, <laughs> and I really gravitate towards the Fender amps. That's not to say, you know, Vox or Marshall or anything like that, good amps. It's just to my ear, I tend to gravitate towards the Fender amps. Um, Having that, said that, it yeah. does do sounds other than the traditional Fender. It, yes. Which we'll get into. Yes. So it is, the way that Fender likes to talk about this online, and if you're thinking about this amp, you've probably gone through all the websites already, but they like to say it's based on a basement design with sort of a not traditional for Fender circuit. And Jesse and I have both taken that to mean this is supposed to be like a blues breaker. You can kind of tell from the name. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it has that sound to it. Now, um, before we get into playing and all the settings, I have to say the construction quality is quite nice for this amp. Well um, it's a nice leather handle. It's got a nice feel to the material. Uh, looking around the amp, there's no noticeable flaws. Um, very happy with the construction and design. I uh, should probably also mention the fact that I bought this with my own money. This was this is not a amp that Fender sent us to test or review. Um, so we're not being paid by Fender in any way to to sort of uh, hawk this amp, if you will. But if we wanted more amp reviews on, you know, we would be glad to accept amps from other you know companies to review. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Vox, I'm looking at you. <laughs> okay. Right. There's this night train thing. Yeah. That, you know. There's a night train, is, you know. Yeah. So anyway. There's a new series of VT out there. Yeah. So <laughs> so anyway, there's a little plug. All right. So back to the amp. The settings, or the controls, excuse me, on this amp are basic. All right. They're not super basic, but they're 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 pretty basic. Um, there's a gain knob. We have a bass. We have a mid. We have a treble, as you would expect. There's a master. You can basically make the master and gain work together to control the overall drive of the amp. You can turn the gain up real high, the master down real low. It breaks up nicely. It's seven watts. 
I can play this in my home office, which is where we're shooting right now, and I'm not going to disturb my spouse. The dog doesn't freak out. Um, it's a nice bedroom size amp. Mm -hmm. um, it has an additional a treble boost, which uh, is supposed to basically boost the treble. All right, and I, I kind of think of that as more of a dirty channel. Is how I've been it using does it. Sound that it's not just the treble boost. It yeah. sounds more gamey. Yeah. So the treble boost is at least before the distortion circuit. Yeah. And uh, so you're getting the, the hit on the gain as well. Yep, absolutely. There's no standby switch. There's just a power switch. And then um, the one thing I think is missing from this amp, and at 450 bucks, I think it should have it. I'll Reverb. Agree. Yeah, I'll agree. Reverb is noticeably missing from this amp. Is it a deal breaker? Absolutely not. Does it sound good? I think so. But, boy, a reverb and would an effects nice. loop would be nice. That's another thing missing from this amp. True, especially the effects loop so that you could put a reverb pedal in there a little more efficiently than uh, putting it in the front of the amp. Yep. Now, to be, that said, I have a, I don't have an effects, I don't have, excuse me, I don't have a um, reverb pedal, but I have a multi-effects pedal by Boss, an ME70, that has a reverb setting, mm -hmm. which I put on this, it just ran right through the input. That's all I did, mm -hmm. and it sounded okay. Yeah, you're just gonna get a little more hair on the reverb tail yeah. than you than you would if it had a, a loop. But if you play these settings enough, you may not miss the reverb too much. Yeah, in a room, it certainly sounds great. And as a recording amp, where you're gonna tack reverb on anyway, it's it works really well. So well, and here's the beauty. Um, on the back here, we have a couple of outs. We have a line out. Mm -hmm. We have a speaker out. And we have another one, which I don't remember off the top of my head. Foot switch. Yes, because the treble, uh, the treble uh, boost is foot switchable by any apparently any standard uh, foot switch, which makes it more like a second channel. Yeah, which is nice. Exactly. Did you? Uh, you didn't play the line out, did you? No, I have not. Oh, we might have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, to see how that uh, does it say if it's a speaker like compensated, so it's kind of like a. You're getting more advanced than I okay, am. Then. I don't know. We'll find We're out. We're going to find that out. We will find out today. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we've done a pretty thorough job talking about this amp. And I'm pretty sure what our audience now wants to do is hear, hear it. it. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, uh, one, hope that all of our guitars are in tune. Two, um, we're going to play different types of guitars through the amp. And I guess um, I'll start. That way... Um, you know, I'm not totally upstaged by Jesse until we get the second set of guitars. Never okay. happened. <laughs> and um, I'm going to play my American Strat that I have here, the American Standard Single Coils, um, through it. And I'll start with the neck, then I'll just play a few quick things just so you can have a chance to the sounds. Let's do some open chords here and make sure the treble boost is off. It is. And let's, let's turn that gain down a little bit. We're going to play some open chords. All right. few notes here. All right. Middle middle selection. We will go through every. We don't want to make this a five hour video. So uh, some power chords here. All right. Some nice power chord sounds. I'll get some notes. position. All right. So American Standard single coil pickups. And let's uh, tell you what, let's put the, uh, the treble boost on here and we will uh, go back to the bridge and we'll do a little bit of that real quick as well. All right. Um... I have no idea why I just played power chords on a treble boost. Um, <laughs> it yeah. cut well. It, it cut okay, you know, maybe a few single notes here, my little run. Some good fur on it. Got some fur on it, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. All right, so let's turn off the treble boost and we'll switch over to Jesse's guitar. Okay, so um, this is a Parker DF824. So um, it's a little more of a representative of a metal ish guitar, the uh, whammy bar, and um, 
It's got Seymour Duncan pickups, a custom humbucker in the bridge, which is sort of between a hot PAF and a distortion, somewhere in there, in the middle, but neither end. And then sort of some hot um, uh, single coils. So let's go um, just some neck pickup. It's very Strat-like, I would think, you know, in selection. Hotter than a standard strap pickup, so you get a little bit of fur there. It's good. Um, little twangy middle position, sort of. You get the, the fur on yeah. there, which is nice. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, if we, a little bit more twangy, sort of, um, can we turn the gain down a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of a cleaner sound. Should be playing out with my fingers, but that's okay. <laughs> is this with the boost on or off? It is off. Off, okay. So let's uh, clean it. So you want, you want it on? Uh, no, I want to get it real nice and clean. All right. Not a song or anything. Just trying to get the idea of uh, as clean as it gets. So I don't think it gets actually like a jazz chorus 120 ultra clean. There's always a little bit of something that I'm hearing there. These are, like I said, a little bit hotter pickups than uh, standard Strat. So um, the other thing about a metal sort of guitar would be um, let's crank up the treble boost and the gain, turn down the master, and this is sort of what you can do heavy, like the ACDC-ish sort of thing. That's not bad. That's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty good. 80s, 80s metal. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to do Metallica, but you'll do... Uh, I don't know, docking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, like I said, no pedal there. It sounds uh, pretty nice. I should also mention that um, we are trying to go through a variety of sounds on each of these guitars for you, uh, where our intention is not to show off, look what we can do, all right? That's because, sure not the case. Yeah, because that, I know <laughs> videos with amp demonstrations, sometimes it gets distracting. Somebody wants to just, you know, put in a whole bunch of notes real fast and, you know, show off their chops. We're more interested in giving you guys a sense of what this sounds like. Right. Um, so... That's my excuse for my bad playing today. All right, so yeah, uh, <laughs> why don't we go ahead and switch out the guitars, and um, we'll bring up some more um, sweet humbuckers. Awesome. All right, so we're back. back. This is uh, the duel of the, um, I guess, semi-hollow body guitars. These yes. Are my, these are my two favorite ones of your guitars, actually. I do like these guitars a lot. <laughs> so I have a uh, semi-hollow Epiphone um, Les Paul with, uh, what's in this thing? Pro Buckers. Uh, yes, Pro Buckers. Uh, that's some kind of like slightly hot PAF type of thing. Probably Pro Bucker Two, Pro Bucker Three. If that matters to you, there you are. So kind of going clean. The rhythm pickup, nice and warm. <laughs> it's this cold day. Yeah. So yeah, this works really well with, with humbuckers. Oh, I have to say, this amp loves humbuckers. Yeah, it seems to just. So, uh, what is your uh, right. 339 do I've for? got an Epi 339 Pro. Ta-da. 
Not an amateur. Yeah, no, no, not an amateur. It's not an amateur up phone guitar. Uh, this is a pro. We're all serious here. Semi hollow body. Uh, and uh, let's see. This has, I believe, Al Nico Classic Pro, something like that. Do a quick web search, ES339. You'll find all the information that you need. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dirty this up a little bit. Sweet. And we'll play on the rhythm, the neck pickup here. And we got to actually Switch. turn my guitar on. There we go. Awesome. Yes. pickups mm -hmm. on it um, again we can so again that's uh, that is the gain up to about so you can see on the camera but uh, the gains up to about uh, what you say it's like three o'clock two yeah. o'clock mm -hmm. two o'clock setting there um, if we go ahead and go down to the treble pickup and uh, maybe bring up the treble boost a little bit let's see how Eh, okay. Not a big fan of that sound, but if we do some <laughs> uh, the notes here. Not bad. All Good. right, not bad at all. And if we want to do a quick middle position, we can turn off the treble uh, boost. We can dial the gain back a little bit. And... Uh, Sound. Not Sweet. bad. Yeah, a little different sound there. Um, so yeah, this is an Epiphone ES339. We've got a Les Paul Florentine Pro humbucking guitar, semi-hollow. I think it sounds pretty good. It's semi-hollow. Very good. Let me switch back to me once. Yeah, I want to see what the ultra-high treble boost gain does with um, these lower output. Sure, and you can you can twill tap that too. Oh yeah. If you wanted can to. Really? Yeah. Oh, so you can. Yeah. Well, now let's turn the gain down and take a look at that. Not quite stratty, but nice. Yeah. And I think that's more of a characteristic of the guitar than the amp there. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, found both these guitars are coil, coil tappable, and the single coil position is a little bit weak. Yeah, which is typical split bucker, which yep. is cool. But, uh, so staying in sort of metal land, I'm just testing each combination here to see how it does the... Uh... Sure. Metal chug. Yeah. And that was on the treble uh, pickup. Which you would be. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe with a metal guitar. That's all you might have. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that works pretty well. Yeah. All right, on All right. the next set of guitars. Yeah, next set of guitars. And we are back through the magic of Jesse's professional yeah, editing semi -professional. skills. Semi-professional. Yeah. Semi-professional. Hey, better not. I mean, if I were doing it, there'd be these weird, you know, I don't know what would be happening. <laughs> um, so, so far, so good. We hope you're still with us. You're not tired of our playing or tired of our guitars. Uh, the dog is still here. Our running commentary. See. Yeah. She's just sort of chilling out, so we haven't disturbed her very that much. That is the quietest I've seen that dog in forever. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Amazing. I know. So the new guitars we have. Yes, I have my Les Paul, Gibson Les Paul Studio Satin. This is my favorite guitar that I own. Mm. Yes, I just said that. I know I've been waffling about you that for the last few years. You can tell it has more dings in it than anything Oh, else. it's a well-loved <laughs> guitar. This is definitely my number one. Um, and it has... Burst Bucker Pro pickups in it, if you care. Uh, and it's not coil tappable, this particular model. So, I know the studios normally it's a are. project for the future. Yeah, maybe it's a project for the future. We'll see. Um, so, let's go ahead, do the rhythm position here. I'll have the gain at 3 o'clock and no treble boost. And so, you can just sort of hear... <laughs> What you expect. Uh, although my guitars, I think this one sounds the best through this amp. It's probably biased. All right. Uh, we turn <laughs> the gain up a little bit and we'll get some. Uh... All right. Not too bad. 
bad. Maybe I should go down for trouble pickup. Trouble pickup. Trouble boost. That's all the trouble right there. That's bright. That's Let's bright. See what it does without the boost. Though. Without the boost. As yeah. we would expect, without the treble boost on. Yes. Uh, so I think we've heard rhythm, we've heard treble. I have a feeling we're getting lazier the more guitars that we play. It's in terms true. Of we're <laughs> going into the Although you get the basic, you've already had the basic idea of like humbucker and single coil, the basic yeah. stuff with the amp. So now we're kind of just loving playing we've the guitar. Definitely <laughs> entered the land of redundancy here on this amp. All right. So, uh, Jesse, let's switch over to you. Talk okay. about your guitar a little bit if you like. So this is your $99 special. Yes, um, it is. Yeah, P90-based. Uh, it's not really, it's pole shaped, but it's a flat top. It's not a carved top. Um, I have no idea what the body wood is on this puppy. Um, but it actually, we were plywood. surprised it had plywood. <laughs> I think it's a solid piece. Yeah, it's something. It's something. Mahogany, maybe. Um, and anyway, it's, uh, we were surprised how good this thing was, you know, when, yeah. when you got it for 100 bucks. Um, the pickups are not real, you know, whatever, but they are decent sounding P90s. So, yeah. Um, <coughs> so just going for uh, what happened? We got all we're kinds of gain land. Okay, yeah. yeah. High gain, kind of trouble pickup, sort of. That's bitey. Yes. I like that. That is bitey. I don't think I've actually played that guitar through this amp yet. Oh, well, there you go. Well, that's what a P90 bridge sounds like through it. And here's the P90 neck. that it does take the control knobs pretty well. So if you roll the volume off, you can get a pretty good clean. I believe that's the, the tone on the... Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was uh, doing that first. That's probably really low in electronics too, so yeah, it's not probably not the yeah, P90. I can't make a decision on P90s, you know, based on a hundred dollar guitar, I yeah, guess. but uh, it's got some good sounds to it. I can see why it's a popular blues machine, it hits that like middle kind of between the humbucker and the single really nice. It does so, like you'd like a sort of a little bit of hair on a tube amp sound, it's kind of like the pickups are that that way, you know, yeah, yeah, Absolutely. cool. A little learning experience for me on the P90s. Yeah, so we should probably do one more round because we have some tellies behind us. Well, I guess we got to play tellies. Yeah, and we've got an SG <laughs> behind us as well. So for those of you that are stick brave enough to want to stick with us for one more round, we'll do one more round of guitars. Sweet. All right. All right, and we are back. The last round of guitars, we promise. For those of you that have stuck around this long. Woohoo! Good you. on you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's probably my mom. 
and our <laughs> significant dad. others and your dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, we have now two new guitars. Uh, Jesse, why don't you go ahead and go first? So Gibson SG, I don't know what series is. Faded, that's a faded. Faded series, yeah. so that's um, one of the more basic lines. Yep. Uh, nice satin finish on it. And uh, some kind of humbuckers. I mean, they're Gibson humbuckers, but I don't know what the line is. Um, so, buy the switch. All oh, right. Game. Got, oh, we've got to turn everything on. Here we go. So let's uh, let's go right to that ACDC thing. Because, let's do it. Because we have an SG in our hands. And you've got the treble boost on now. Yes, I do. All right. That sounds work. Yeah. Get the part. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> we didn't practice, you can tell. Um, so that sounds pretty gnarly. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, let's go with the rhythm. So, this is with the, uh, the, what am I saying, the line out <laughs> um, into a studio recorder. So it's, um, as you can hear it, it's kind of, uh, it still has that treble uh, kind of raspiness. So I don't think the speaker, it's not uh, speaker compensated. Okay. In other words, you wouldn't want to plug it directly into a board or record it directly. I mean, you could, but you'd have to EQ it kind of heavily afterward. Um, and I'll show you what that sounds like. Um, so... on the top end. Um, <laughs> even with the rhythm pickup, I was hearing that. So, um, it feels more kind of like a preamp out, actually. You could go into a power amp than it does a recording out. Um, so, you know, you could use it with headphones or directly in the recorder, but it doesn't seem to be optimized for that. Um, and use it else how. Or use like a direct box type of thing that has a speaker compensator on it. So there you go. Sure. Excellent. Um, let's do some telly. All right. Let's go ahead and switch the guitars out here. Make sure we got everything up here. So this is a telly Highway 1. I think 2004 might be one of the last years they made the Highway 1s. Uh, I think they went from the Highway 1s to the American Specials. Okay. I think is maybe what they did. That could be wrong though. Probably is. Um, it has tele pickups. I have no idea what that means. Uh, so, you sure if you want to go online and find a 2003-2004 vintage Highway 1, you can find out that information. Um, if you're a tele fan, you already know. So yeah, exactly. Know. Right. <laughs> so, so yes. Um, why don't we go ahead. We'll do some low gain um, setting here. And I don't play this guitar a whole lot. Um, but when I do, I like to mess around a little bit. And uh, let's do some kind of country kind of picking that I just recently learned and it's going to become clear that I just recently learned it. <laughs> so, not bad. Clear. This is on the um, neck pickup. Okay. Um, not bad. Just sounds like a tally. Throw a bass breaker. Yep. Go over to the, the bridge. All right. Now we're bright. So that's right. We're very bright. 
Let's play it right. How about that? Ooh. There we go. Let's face it. We've lost most of our audience at this point. So That's like, all right. We're playing the wrong chord. It's not going to matter. So, uh, but yeah, uh, nice and bright sound. Turn some gain up here. Let's just go all the way up. What the, I didn't see what it sounds like. And you know what? Treble boost. Let's just knock it all out here and see what this sounds like. That's furry. That's kind of obnoxious, actually. <laughs> That's almost fun to me. Yeah, I, I apologize. <laughs> I apologize for that sound. I'm not a big fan of that sound. If you like that sound, so great. Let's, let's crank the treble down. Do it again. Yeah. All right. Especially when we cut the triple boost off. Okay. That would probably uh So do that. Yeah. Let's do that the uh, lick a bit. Um a few times. I'll, I'll show you what the tongue controls are doing. So can you um, play a little something lower on the strings, like a uh, fifth and sixth strings, G, A, a area? <laughs> So that's um, they do have pretty <clears throat> excuse me um wide um, pretty wide effect on the tone controls. Yeah. Within the range of um, you know the sound of the you know like the higher notes you were playing. Sure. Couldn't do anything with the bass, of course. And sure. Within the limitations of a ten-inch speaker, so you're not going to get that chest thumping thing you would with a Marshall stack type of thing. But um, but yeah, these seem to really um, be pretty effective. That's what stood out to me in a large big box store I was playing. I played this in many different, in many different stores before I bought it. I was playing through a large big box store and one of the things I noticed is that the controls mattered. Yeah. You know, you get a lot of different range out of this. Um, you can play the amp just like you can play the guitar. Yeah. Right? And um, so it's a real nice sort of um, variety of tones that you can get from this amp. Um, you'll get a lot of mileage out of it. If you, wanna, if you want your first tube amp, Maybe you're like me and you're moving away from modeling or you want to, and that's like, I should say moving away from modeling. You want something different than a modeling amp or different from your starter um, solid state amp. This is a great first step into the world of tube amps, I think. Um, so yeah, um, we also, uh, we don't have it with us, but we've also run this through a one by 12 cabinet. Mm -hmm. And you can get an extension cab for this. You can get the seven watt head in the 12 inch cab, or you can hook this up to a, a one by 12 cab. It sounds different, but not necessarily better. Mm -hmm. It sounded good, don't get us wrong, but we, we A beat it, we played different things through it, and we just found, yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice thing to have. And, mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't like, wow, I really need to swap this out for the one by 12 cab and head. Right. It wasn't That's even true. close to that, you know. It was like, it's different. It'd be a nice thing to have at one point to expand the sound, but yeah, not, not so bad. Especially because I already have a 12-inch speaker in my Mustang 3. So That's true. Right, it just didn't seem like it was uh, necessary. So, I think this pretty much wraps up, uh, you know, this amp review. Any final thoughts, Jesse? That's a nice amp. <laughs> I like that. I'm not really ready to make that. I'm a modeler guy, so I don't have any tube amps, you know. Um, but when we've gone shopping for them, you know, with the, the various uh, PB and uh, Box and Fenders, um, this um, is really nice. I mean, certainly I'd recommend it for a, for a smaller, you know, tube amp. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, if you're not going Marshall, hey, this is really... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's just it. It's kind of just down Marshall a little bit, you know, with for, with, for Fender. Yeah. You know? But you, uh, yeah, and it doesn't have the, um, the same ultra clean like you're going to get with like a twin reverb. Right. Because, you know, with the tube hitting earlier because it's a lower wattage amp, yeah. 
I mean, that's it is what it is, you know. Um, but it's a nice um, kind of mush of uh, different kind of vibes. It's, it's a new cool direction for Fender. Yeah. yeah, it's a new direction for Fender. I think in terms of this new line, it's not it's not a it's not a derivative of one of their older older products. Right. In yeah, a that's sense. true. It's something it's something different. So yeah, go to your local store and uh, play through it and see what you think because it's um, it's a pretty impressive little guy. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well. If you've made it through this long with us, congratulations. We should buy you a beer. Yeah, we should, we should buy, <laughs> should buy you a beer. Definitely. Congratulations, because yeah, you have excellent stamina, and thank you. Um, as always, we would love to hear from you. Please tweet us at SST Show. Please uh, click like in um, YouTube. You can subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube. Leave us some comments and feedback. Um, you can email us. You can email me directly, Chris at JesterCat.com. We'd love to hear ideas. We would love to hear so topic suggestions, whatever you may have. Uh, until next time, keep picking and grinning. Good night. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure is a production of JesterCat Studios. You can see more about this show and all other JesterCat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at sixstringsandthings at gmail.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can also follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester700, and Chris at CW Cult. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 